Well, good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer, um, our Wednesday night devotion. Uh, tonight we'll be looking at readings of, we'll be looking at uh, readings Deuteronomy and John's Gospel and Psalm 93. Uh, I want to begin this evening first by giving thanks. Uh, I want to give thanks for uh, after some uh, struggles, uh, I think I've, you've seen in past videos, with uh, some mail delivery issues because we were in the office, not in the office, and it was hard for them to figure out a time to, to deliver to us. We did finally receive today all of our, our back uh, mail, and, and in that, of course, any of you who have sent in offerings uh, via check, sent in offerings through the mail, we, were, we did receive all of those today, and uh, wow, just thank you for your generosity. Thank you for continuing to support your church, uh, this congregation, uh, during uh, all of this time of pandemic, and uh, truly give thanks uh, for, for showing your love and appreciation during this uh, for your congregation, and, and we look forward to putting things, uh, getting things to a place where we're going to be able to welcome you back in. Uh, the church council did gather and uh, last night uh, via Zoom and had some good conversation, sometimes very difficult conversation, and hopefully in the next uh, few weeks we will be uh, we will be releasing kind of what the plan is to be able to move forward uh, and to be able to invite people in. It'll it'll be small at first, um, but know that uh, with the you know new normal, uh, it's going to be. Uh, we're going to continue to live stream the service. Uh, we're still going to continue to do Wednesday night devotions and Zoom small groups. So, so stay tuned for that. As we gather this evening, let us go ahead and take a moment and pause. Uh, let us give thanks. Let us place our hearts uh, in God's presence. You know, amidst the world, we're getting very distracted. It's easy to, to lose focus. So let us focus our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Christ is risen, alleluia. Our first reading this evening is from Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, and it begins Moses' last kind of farewell. He's speaking to the Israelites to tell them that he's not going into the promised land with them and after their desert wandering, and we're going to hear what he has to say. When Moses had finished speaking all these words to Israel, he said to them, I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to get about, and the Lord has told me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over before you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua also will cross over before you as the Lord promised. The Lord will do to them as he did to Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you, and you shall deal with them in full accord with the command that I have given to you. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them. Because it is the Lord your God who goes with you, he will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and bold, for you are the one who will go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them. And you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Moses commanded them every seventh year in the scheduled year of remission during the festival of booths, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and children. 
as well as the aliens residing <coughs> in your towns. So that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God and to observe diligently all the words of this law. And so that their children who have not known it may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land that you are crossing over the Jordan to possess. And our psalm reading this evening is Psalm 93. Excuse me a moment. Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lifted up their roaring, more majestic than the thunders of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. And our gospel reading for this Wednesday is John chapter 16, Jesus says, a little while and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean? By saying to us, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. They said, What does he mean by this, a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you discussing among yourselves what I mean when I said, a little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice, and you will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain, because her hour has come, but when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you now again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. On that day, you will ask nothing of me. Very truly, I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of our Lord. Two stories prepare us for tomorrow. Tomorrow in our liturgical calendar is 40 days since Easter. It is the day of which we commemorate the ascension of the Lord, the ascension of our Lord, when Jesus returns to his Father and ours and takes his hand and takes his seat at the right hand of God. It's not too different in the message that Moses is telling, is saying to the people of Israel, and saying, and Jesus says to his disciples. With Moses, he's not entering into the promised land with them. No, he's passing the torch to Joshua. He's passing on to Joshua the ability to, to lead, the ability to govern, the ability to, uh, that Joshua will listen to God and follow God 
and therefore by doing so will lead the people continually through into this new and promised land. Now we know if you follow the whole story of the Old Testament, this isn't going to last forever. It's not going to take long before the people of Israel are going to fall apart. They're going to have problems within them. They're going to have bad rulers. They're going to have make poor decisions. They're going to abandon God. People are going to forget about God. They're going to remember God. They're going to repent. It's, it, it becomes quite the story. In the same way, when we talk about Jesus uh, leaving and saying, for a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me in a little while, we're, kind of, we're looking at this little brief period of time that until Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, until God sends the Holy Spirit down upon them as tongues of fire in Pentecost. It's the Holy Spirit who makes Jesus present to us. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us to see Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit that invites us into a life of faith that we might be able to trust just as God has gone before us into the promised land, that we get to see that Jesus, who is God, also extends into the promised land. And with that comes the, the encouragement to be strong and courageous. To live our lives in such a way that we trust in God. Knowing that God's going to take care of us. Knowing that God's going to stay with us. Knowing that there's no place that we can possibly go. That God has not already been there and redeemed that place and claimed that place in the name of his son Jesus. These things are not idle promises, but they're the promises of a God who's going to continue to encourage us and continue to send to us the Holy Spirit that we might see the world with eyes of faith. There's anxiety that exists in our world today. There's a, a tension that's underlying everything that we do a concern about what the future is going to hold. You may not be concerned necessarily about going out and being around people in large crowds, but maybe you do have a concern about what the future is going to be. I just read, caught the headline of a news article that, today that said that it, people in a survey, they said it's going to, people feel like it's going to be at least six months before they really feel a sense of normalcy and a sense of safety to be able to go out. And I think there's something about that. There's always going to be this cautiousness that's going to underplay and run through the back of our minds. That cautiousness is a good thing. What we cannot do, what we are invited to do, is to not let that cautiousness and that fear overcome us. But allow that to help us to make the best decisions and the best, and to place our trust in Christ and Christ alone. To be able to know that, you know, as we venture out, as we, as we have an opportunity and as we follow the guidance of people who are smarter, because God sent those people to us, right? Doctors and nurses and medical professionals and scientists. That all comes from God. The Christian faith in no way uh, denies the very valuable work of science because in science, God gave it to us. We listen to that. But we also know we also listen to the voice of God that tells us to be strong and courageous, that invites us into a relationship and to trust that God is always going to be with us, that the Holy Spirit is always going to stay with us, and, and the Holy Spirit is going to always make Christ known to us. And for that, we give thanks. We give thanks for the reminder of this Holy Spirit. 
We give thanks that, you know, when the waters rage against us, as the psalm says tonight, when the, when the waters are trying to overcome us, when we're not, when we're feeling overburdened and overwhelmed and anxious and feeling in despair, we know and trust that there is a God who became real for us in Jesus Christ, who has already overcome and conquered the world, who goes to sit at the right hand of the Father, and in doing so, all things, all powers are subject to him. We give thanks for that. And we pray for the faith to be able to see that. And we give, and we place our hope and trust that Christ will do exactly what he says he's going to do. And you know what? That is exactly what God does. Holds us close. Holds us close to his heart. Calms our fears and anxieties. And brings all things in submission to God's will. Thanks be to God. As we gather this evening, we invite the Lord in our midst. Lord, stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. The Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant, Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we gather this evening, we we pray together, knowing by faith that God hears our prayers. So we gather and pray for churches throughout the world, for churches in our local community, for their pastors, for church leaders, for church councils, for the Spirit's guidance, for wisdom, for the ability to listen to science and to trust by faith as they discern options for, for bringing people together to worship. They bring, as they bring their people back so they might hear the gospel and share the sacraments. We pray tonight for governments and governmental leaders and local leaders. We pray for those who are working hard to uh, make sure that the best information is out, who are to help people. We pray for those working in the unemployment office and having to process a lot of claims. And we pray for those who are working in social work and having to care for the poor among us. We pray this evening also for all who are sick, who are stressed and anxious, who are worried to venture out, 
We pray for those who are venturing out and are traveling, for their safety, for their comfort, for their healing. We pray for them. And we pray and remember for, before God today, all those who have died. We're now resting in the promise of our Lord. Lord, receive these prayers according to your abundant grace and mercy. And help us together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray again. We give you thanks, Lord God, for giving us this opportunity to come together, to pray together. We ask you to continue to keep us safe, keep our friends and family safe during this time. Help us to always trust in you and lead us forever by your Holy Spirit. For we trust that you go before us wherever we go. And there you will be. Ahead of us behind us, and right beside us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, receive the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. This concludes.